bottles, presumably, were invented for keeping liquids in. They're a most sensible shape. The narrow neck stops it spilling when the liquid slops about. It's ideal for pouring from, and it's very easy to seal. Now, the time-honoured way of sealing a bottle is with a cork. Now, cork's wonderful stuff. It's got a bit of give, it's more or less waterproof, and it has good insulating properties. It's used for all sorts of things. Floor tiles, insulated table mats, even the soles of shoes. As probably many of you know, cork is the bark of a tree. This tree, the cork oak. Its botanical name is Quercus suba. Quercus is what the Romans called oak trees, and suba is what they called cork. It's a native of the Mediterranean region. Portugal's the great cork-producing country. It's an evergreen tree, and probably not everybody's idea of what an oak tree would look like. But if you look amongst the leaves, you can see the yellow male catkins that produce the pollen that fertilises the inconspicuous female flowers that develop into the acorns, which fall to the ground in all. Great oaks from little acorns grow and all that. Now, if I break a bit of this bark off, you'll be able to see that it really is cork. Now, the people who harvest and sell cork commercially, what they do is they cut right round the tree at the bottom here and right round here, and then make a big cut down here and on the other side so that they can peel the two halves right off and they get a nice thick layer of cork. Now, this doesn't ring bark the tree because it grows another lot of bark, but it takes eight to 10 years for it to be thick enough to be worth harvesting again. With our wine industry booming, and the same thing happening in California, South Africa, Chile, and everywhere else, it's getting hard to find enough cork thick enough to cut solid corks from. This is a solid cork, for instance, and you can see the grain of the bark running the full length of the cork. But many corks these days are made from granular cork, often with a disc of solid cork on either end. They're reconstituted, like this champagne cork. The upper swollen part is made of reconstituted granulated cork, and there are a couple of discs of solid cork on the bottom end. Finally, let me explain why wine bottles should be kept on their sides. Now, if you leave them upright, the cork may dry out a bit and shrink, and this lets air in, which enables the bacteria that can convert alcohol to vinegar to grow and spoil the wine. But if you leave it lying on its side, the cork's kept wet and the air can't get in and the bacteria can't grow. Like us, they need oxygen to be able to get on with the job. So, cheers. Mm -hmm.